Hi, I'm Jason with Anderson Hitches, and today we're going to show you how to install the weight distribution hitch. Okay, at this point we're assuming that you have got the right kit for your truck and trailer combination. If you have any questions on that, click on the link below and it'll take you to where we can help you figure that out. Uh, at this point we are going to make sure that our trailer is level and we're going to go ahead and take a measurement to make sure that we get this uh, to set up our ball height on our truck. Measure from the ground to the top of the coupler. Now that we've got our height from our coupler on the trailer, we're going to go ahead and find out where we need to have the drop rack. Now, this drop rack can be in the drop position or in the rise position. In this case, we're going to have to put this in the rise position to get the ball height to where we need it. So now we'll take the ball housing and we'll put it in approximately where we think it's going to go. And what we can do is, if we're not in the right height, we can change that after taking a measurement. Now we'll measure from the ground to the top of the ball. Okay, we wanted the height of the ball to be about an inch and a half to two inches taller than what the coupler was, so that as we apply the weight of the trailer, the suspension will actually be able to take that weight and the trailer will end up level. So on our measurements here, I was about an inch and a half low. These holes that are spaced here are spaced out about an inch and a half. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this up one hole. Let's retake our measurement. Perfect, let's get on to the next step. We've got everything at the proper height for this installation, so now all we have to do is go ahead and torque everything down. Now that we've got this tightened down pretty tight, we're gonna to wanna to torque this down to 150 pounds. And the reason we do that is so that the steel on the drop compresses around the aluminum ball house. And we want to do that to remove all the space we can on the inside. This eliminates any premature wear on your ball housing. Now let's back the tow vehicle up and get the coupler over the ball. Now that we've got the ball directly underneath the coupler, we're going to go ahead and lower the jack down until we just barely put any pressure on there so that we can couple this. We don't want to apply any weight to the tow vehicle at this point in time. With the coupler now engaged and latched, we're going to put the triangle plate on. If you put your triangle plate on and you notice it's at a little bit of an angle, that's not a problem. Click on the link below and we'll show you a couple of tricks to straighten it out. We're now going to take a measurement along the frame to find out where our brackets go. You'll want to measure from the center of the coupler out to approximately 27 to 29 inches. Leave yourself a couple inches just in case. We'll find out exactly where these brackets go once we assemble the chains. We're going to go ahead and assemble the brackets now. Now a quick tip for you is that if you put the bolt in and just barely put the nut on there, it gives us enough room to set this bracket directly over the frame. Now as you're assembling this bracket, you want to make sure there's nothing on the inside of this frame that may be in the way. Uh, if there is, you may have to move it. Once you've got that on, go ahead and put the bottom bolt in. Get the nut on there, and we're going to leave this loose so that when we get the chains on here, we can pull it to tension. Okay, now let's go ahead and assemble our chains. The first thing you're going to want to do is get the D-link and thread that through the end link. Now, when you assemble this on here, you want to make sure the threads are on the bottom. I'll show you that now. This way, as you go through from the top down, you'll be able to tighten that from the top side. And when you tighten this down, you don't want to tighten it down a lot. If you snug this down, you'll actually want to back it out about a quarter of a turn. With these D-links, once there's a pressure applied there, it will actually cause tension on there, and this will actually get harder to remove over time as you're driving down the road. At this point, we're going to want to make sure that the chain here is untwisted. We don't want it to be several twists here. We want to make sure that the little lines here are all in a straight, uh, a straight line, the links are in a straight line. And at that point you can insert this directly through the bracket here. Now you want to make sure you got enough room, remember to get that straight, you want to make sure that you got enough room to put on your urethane spring, 
your large washer and your nut. Now, if you don't have enough room, this is why I, I told you to keep that bracket loose. You can move this bracket accordingly to get that on. Once you've threaded that on, get it just to where there's about one thread showing. And that'll get you your distance that you need to have the brackets at, simply by pressing the bracket back. Get it so that there's applied tension directly on the chain. Tighten down your bracket. And we'll do the same on the other side. Now that we have the brackets in place and you've pulled back on the top of that to give tension to the chain, we want to check to make sure that there's no obstructions or wires or anything on the inside that will pinch or, or that it may be in the way. Um, if there is something that you can't move, then what you can actually do is you can actually shorten or lengthen the chain. And you can do that either with our kit that we have that adds six more links to it, or you can actually shorten the chain just by cutting off the chain length. If you do need to cut off some links, make sure to cut it from the triangle plate side in order to shorten that chain up. Now that we've got any obstructions cleared from the brackets, we're going to go ahead and torque these down. And we recommend torquing these down to 90 pounds of pressure. Now that we've torqued our bolts to 90 pounds, we're going to go ahead and install our set screw. Now, you want to do this by hand, uh, get it in there and, and tighten it down until the tip of that touches the frame. Then you've got to use a 5 16 Allen wrench to torque that down another couple turns. If you have a C-channel frame, what you'll want to do is you want to pre-drill a hole for your set screw. If you have any questions, refer to your owner's manual. At this point, we're ready to set our tension out of our chains. Go ahead and double check, make sure that all your bolts are tightened down to specifications. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and take the socket that's included in on the kit, and we're going to hand tighten this to start off with. Each of our sockets come with a line on it that will help you count the amount of rotations that you have. Each rotation counts for one thread. So you can just put that on there, and go ahead and rotate that around until it's solid, until you can't twist that anymore. Once you're at that point, take a half inch socket that fits in the end of that, and we're going to go ahead and give this three to four more rotations, and you can count the rotations on the socket itself. And that's four right there. Now we'll go do the same on the other side. We can now go ahead and hook up our chains. And our power. and left the jack out of place. Now that our installation is complete, we're going to sight level the trailer. The most important thing on this installation is that your trailer is towing as level as possible. So if you're a little high, that's okay. If you're a little low, you may have to bring your ball housing up one or two notches. As for the tow vehicle, we want to make sure that you have adequate suspension for the size of trailer that you're towing different vehicles have different types of suspension so the height difference that this will drop and come back up will change depending on the vehicle and trailer combination. Now we want to make sure that you're not getting any kind of extremes the front end way up or the front end way down. We want to make sure that you get an even distribution of that weight. Well we're ready to hit the road. Thanks for watching and if you have any questions give us a call or visit our website at andersonhitches.com.